Hi friends, it's Terry Gaines. In this video, I'm going to share the double twisted ribbon technique. It is very similar to the twisted ribbon technique, which is having designer series paper go diagonally across your cardstock. Two different designs, so it appears that your ribbon is going across, folding over, you see the back side of the ribbon, it folds over, you see the front side of the ribbon. With the double twisted ribbon, it appears that there are two different ribbons going across the cardstock and they crisscross in the middle. I'm going to give you all the details to create this technique and at the end I'm going to show you lots of samples using different designer series papers. So to start out you need a base to put your designer series paper on. I'm going to have my base five and a half inches so it's the height of the card and it is going to be two inches wide. It needs to be scored several locations. I'm going to actually score an eight by five and a half piece of cardstock, and that way I can score four at the same time. So the score lines for this designer series paper along the five and a half inch side would be one inch increments. So at every one inch, you will want to score your cardstock. Now, if you would like to make this card or you make this technique, if you go over to my blog, createwithterrygaines.com. I have a PDF that you can download with all the instructions along with some photos for this technique. So I have got this scored at one, two, three, four, and I'm scoring it at five. So what that means is we have a one inch up here and half inch down here. We're gonna consider this one inch um, spot up here at the top and the half inch score line is going to be be the bottom. So I've scored this eight inch long piece of cardstock. Now I can come in here and cut this at two inches and then I've got the scoring done for four of these that are at the two inch width. But do note that you can make this two and a half, three inches, you can make this lot wider and I have some samples to show you how that would look if you made it wider. So for this video I just need this two inch strip and I'm done with the trimmer so I'm going to move that off to the side. For tools I would suggest you use a silicone craft mat. I'm going to use my stamp and seal for my adhesive. Use your favorite adhesive. Now you need half inch strips of designer series paper. You can use short pieces that might be in your scrap bin and um, any designer series paper is going to work. You need four different patterns. I'm going to use 12 inch um, lengths and trim them as I assemble. You need four designs. Two are going to be on the back side and two are going to be on the top side. I'm using designer series paper that is from a packet called Hues of Happiness. It has some beautiful floral prints on one side of the paper. There's six different designs. They're 12 by 12. And then it has some fun backgrounds on the other side. The prints I'm going to be using or I'm using or the strips are from this 12 by 12 print where you have all these beautiful um, colors in the yellows and pinks on this side and the blues and purples on this side. So this is um, the paper I'm using and then the two other strips are from this piece of designer series paper. As you can see that all of these colors on this paper coordinate with these flowers and papers on this side. So you can use any color combination and any designer series paper and you're going to make a beautiful card. So as I mentioned, I'm going to start out with 12 inch pieces and I failed to mention you also need a paper snips, very important tool for this. So I'm going to start out, as I mentioned, the top will be where you have this one inch um, panel here. And what we want to do is start with the colors on the bottom. I'm going to use the solid pieces on the bottom. And then this may appear to be this, it's the same print, but I feel that this print has more pink colors in it. So I'm going to try to keep that with this back, this ribbon or designer series paper. And this has more of the crushed curry and um, daffodil delight colors, the yellow, so I'm going to keep those together. So I'm going to start out with these being my design one and two. Now I'm going to turn, it doesn't matter which one I start out with, I'm going to put adhesive on the back, a section of it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on my craft mat. It's going to be easier to have it on a surface to apply this. I'm going to start out at the top left corner of the cardstock. And I'm going to put this first piece lining the top edge of the designer series paper, diagonally going down 
and meeting up to the, the top score line. Um, so this point to that score line. So I'll bring it to the camera. So I've started it at this point and line the top of the paper up to the top of that piece or that score line. So that diagonally across that first panel. Then I'm going to turn this over and trim this. Now I can switch to the next color because I want to alternate from one design to the next design. So the second one watching the top of the designer series paper, you're going to line it up to the point of the score line and to that score line. So just across one panel and then you're going to trim this. If you want to make this project, as I believe I mentioned already, I have a PDF on my blog, and with the video, you can pause the video at any time that I may be going too fast or you need to grab a product or some materials um, to continue making yours. So once I trimmed this edge, this edge, it lines up really well for that edge. I would highly suggest you use a paper snips to trim this instead of a paper trimmer. It's easier to get that excess of adhesive off a paper snips blade than the blade of your trimmer. So you're going to alternate um, each of the colors here until you work your way all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to have to fill in the top and the bottom gaps and I'm going to give you, um, show you how to do that. But just continue down until you have all of those strips or those um, panels filled and then we'll trim this off. So to fill those spots in the top and the bottom, we have extra white space here. We want this equal amount of white space on all of this area. So what I want to do is take this, I want to take this one, I'm going to put some adhesive on the back. Now what I'm going to do is cover up this point right to the edge of that point and look for an angle that I have equal spacing on, let's see, equal spacing, let's see if I can get this, I got a bad angle with the camera there, there you go. We're going to say that's good, where your spacing is equal here. You don't have anything to line up on that edge and then you want to trim this off and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and trim these pieces off while I have this cardstock turned over and get lots of excess of adhesive. And as I mentioned, it's easier to clean off your paper snips than it is a trimmer. Now we need to do the side down here. Now this, you do have that score line. Now I've seen this um, twisted ribbon technique where you have to do pencil lines at the edge of your cardstock. When you do the score line, when we put the next piece of a designer series paper on, it's going to cover up all the score lines, and the score lines are so much easier to put in your cardstock than marking a pencil line on each side. So now we have design one and two complete, and we're going to now work on design three and four. So as I mentioned, I feel this has got a little bit more of the pink colors in, so I'm going to put that over this um, I think that is my, um, Melon Mambo color there. So I'm going to put my adhesive on and then I'm going to go diagonally up in this for this next pattern. So I'm going to line up my designer series paper to the edges for these ribbons. See how this ribbon here is going to be followed along the edge here? So you want to continue to do that. Let me get those strips out of the way here. My videos are unedited. They contain bloopers, misspoken words, various things, but I um, am going to continue with this video and um, share this technique with you. So since I'm working with this, um, this strip, I'm going to continue working with this strip and, and skip this next spot and go to this spot. I um, am going to try to find, roll my adhesive over. I'm going to try to put as many of the pink color flowers on this section and trim that off. And I put some more adhesive back here and you can see how that is is defining our twisted ribbon technique. 
And since this scrap, I'm going to actually use a section right in here to grab this flower section right here. How about like that? I'm actually going to turn that over. It looks like those flowers would be upside down if I go that direction. Goodness, overthinking this. Sometimes you do that. And doing this technique is kind of a surprise because you really don't know how they're going to look together until you um, start creating it. And that's true with the samples I'm going to share with you. Some I'm, I, I really, really love and some are like, oh, maybe I should have switched and put this on top and that on bottom. But that's a learning lesson on creating this. And there's no wrong way to do it. So now I've got the pink twisted ribbon. Now we're going to work on matching up the yellow flowers here. So now I'm going to go this direction and put more of the yellow ribbon or yellow paper there. You can see how this is all coming together. And as I mentioned, it appears that there's two twisted ribbons going across. Now we're going to fill this section in and just like the first layer, we're going to have to fill in the top and bottoms too. So I can line this up. Oops, you know what, that's got such, oops. I'm gonna grab this section. I kind of forgot to watch for yellow colors here. Let's grab this section of the designer series paper and get more of the yellow colors there. So let's see. There you go. And now, as I mentioned, we've got a put something here and up here. We're going to stay with the yellows because that's the color right here. Let's see if we got it. Here we go. Let's work with this piece. So I'm going to take this and now I'm going to just look to get that equal or that angle to get that right angle for this and just put this down like here. Trim this off. And you're going to love the final results of this twisted ribbon technique. Isn't that coming together really nicely? So here I'm going to put some a little bit more adhesive on and put this across this area right here. Look for that equal spacing. I'm trying to get that angle just to be the same there. And I'm going to turn that little piece off. And now we have this all done. And that is the twisted ribbon technique. And this half inch is what I'm going to consider the bottom. And I'm going to consider that the top. And there you have two different ribbons. It appears to be two different ribbons. And they crisscross in the middle. Now I'm going to decorate this card. And I'm going to show you lots of different our samples that I've created using different designer series papers. So I'm going to move that out. I'm going to bring in the Melon Mambo cardstock. I um, love stamping up names of their cardstock and coordinating papers or coordinating product. Now I'm going to make these even on the top here and equal spacing on the side. Just look how that color pops out the pink color flowers. Now I'm going to place this one on crushed curry just to get that secondary color to pop out. And I'm going to choose to put this on white cardstock. So I have my eight and a half by five and a half. I've got it scored at four and a quarter. You can also just use your bone folder to crease this. So I have lots of scrap pieces of cardstock over on the side that have adhesive on. So it's best to have a little trash bin handy so you can just put those right in the trash bin. Now what I'm going to do is place this. I'm going to choose to put it over towards the edge to show a little bit of the white cardstock here. And then I'm going to embellish it with the same designer series paper that I have used for the strips. So here, just love how these um, turn out. Now the flowers I'm going to use are from that same designer series paper pack. That paper pack has two additional sheets that have a full sheet of flowers and greenery that can be cut out with the coordinating dies or you can fussy cut them out. If you're going to fussy cut them out, I would suggest that you use a little bit of white space between the image and where you trim out and it will help you camouflage any imperfection. So one sheet has all of these colors and the other sheet has all of these colors which are perfect for the different pieces of the 12 by 12 paper that I cut the strips out from. So to 
put the images on, we need some dimensionals and a bone folder. What I like to do is give some texture to the, the cutout flowers. I roll downward and then I turn the tops up a little bit. And then I'll take dimensionals and I'll take and just put a couple dimensionals right in the middle. And why I use dimensionals are to give it some dimension, but also it's gonna let me um, have some space to tuck some greenery behind the flowers. So I'm gonna start out with this first flower right down here. And then I'm going to add, I'll add this flower to bring in the secondary color. And I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool here. And let's see, I'm gonna just put one on here. These dimensionals are really strong. So I'm gonna put that one right here. And then I'll use, I just put four flowers on this one. Or, yeah, there's no wrong. I always second guess, should I put three? Should I put four? I know um, a lot of times people will say that you should design in um, odd numbers which is a good idea, but I wanna add some height right here. So I'm going to take this flower and add this. I'm just putting one dimensional behind all of these. Um, you can definitely put more, but I'm just going to put, there we go, we're gonna do that. Now we're gonna fill this in with some greenery. I also cut these pieces out of that same designer series paper. I'm going to use dimensionals. As I mentioned, by putting the dimensional just in the center of the flower, that allows you to tuck the greenery underneath and you can place that any location that you want. And I'm gonna just scatter a few of this, these greenery pieces throughout the floral image. And it's okay if you just have partial pieces because of, that are cut from the edge of the designer series paper, the stem is missing, but you can tuck that underneath and nobody's gonna know that there's a piece missing there. So I'm going to add that here. And we'll stick with three pieces of the greenery to keep that odd number there for design. Now the banner I'm using is from the Stylish Shape dies. I love using these and I actually used it and then I trimmed it straight on the edge. I'm gonna put it to the edge of the paper. The sentiment I used is from the Go To Greetings, which is in Stampin' Up's annual catalog. There are four different sentiments in three different styles and sizes. It's a very versatile stamp set. And I use Smoky Slate for my um, ink pad color. That's a really good go-to color for sentiments because it's gonna coordinate with almost every um, color scheme that you use for a project. And it's not too dark of an ink. And then I'm going to put this right here. And I chose this to be a happy birthday card. It can be a card for so many different um, occasions. I'm going to add a element right here in the center of that flower. I'm going to use the glossy dots assortment. So these are part of the same suite with the hues of happiness. Comes in four different colors that coordinate with the different colors of flowers and three different sizes per color. I tend to always go and put not always, but most of the time I'll take the same color gem and or dot and put on the same color um, flower. And now we have our completed card. I just love how this double twisted ribbon technique decorates your card. Now to make a twisted ribbon technique, instead of scoring your cardstock every one inch, score it every half inch. So half inch se sections and go from one score line to the next and just repeat that pattern and you'll have a twisted ribbon technique. Do the one inch space and four different designs for the double twisted ribbon technique. So let me share some other cards that I've made with the same designer series paper. This is the textured chic paper. These are some additional prints. I made this card using the evening evergreen and the petal pink and the butterflies. Also using the stylish shape dies for here. This is the Pretty Prints paper, which I just changed the color, so it's a drastic change, so you can really see the double twisted ribbon technique and use um, the, the dual um, oval sponge, the forever flourishing dies, and a butterfly die. Now the next samples are from the same designer series paper. I use different colors. And here I have a floral design on the bottom 
and on the top, just trying that out. Like I mentioned earlier, try things out because it's kind of a surprise how things are going to look. But the beauty of this designer series paper, you can take all those flowers and just decorate them to coordinate. You had so many different flowers. Here's the same concept, just different colors. And I just chose to use all the same flowers, colors of the flowers for embellishing this card. Here's another one. Now I mentioned early that early on that you can change the width of this panel base that you put your strips of designer series paper on. If you look at this, you can see this is a half inch wider. So this is a two and a half inch panel. It has just changes the, the panel length. You still get that fun technique. And then if you want to, you can even create one that is three inches wide. So this one is three inches wide and I use some of the bolder colors on the back. So much fun to create this. One of my favorites is using the um, Vows of Holly designer series paper. I just love how this card turned out. This is from the designer series paper. I use the circles from the stylish shapes and also the go-to greeting. Now I use the designer series paper that is in the um, um, Vows of Holly. I might have said the wrong name. And this is the, you get some holiday prints on one side and on the other side it's all different backgrounds. It's a very versatile designer series paper pack. It is part of my Create with Terry card kit. Each month I have a different card kit that you receive free if you place a $50 purchase with me. If your purchase is $30, I have a fun fold that I send to you with instructions and then at $50 I include the card kit. This is one of my favorites. I just love how this evening evergreen and then the cherry cobbler colors go together. And it can be a thinking of you. If you don't send out holiday cards, you can send out a thinking of you card to a friend or family member. I hope you enjoyed this technique. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. As I mentioned, I have a PDF on my blog that you can download that gives you the step-by-step -step instructions on creating this technique. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the red, the red box under the video, then select the red bell to be notified when I upload a new video. If you are in need of any Stampin' Up! supplies, I would love you to reach out to me or connect to my online store. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this project. Take care and happy creating.